What's up gamers? Rainy Potato here to cover the Darkest Dungeon 2 map, all the various route types and locations or nodes in the game, and how to decide on a winning path for each region. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe and join my Patreon or become a YouTube member for early access to my upcoming videos. Darkest Dungeon 2 introduced the Slay the Spire style map system. Each region will have a unique semi-randomly generated map with each of the 11 locations or nodes presenting different challenges and exciting rewards. In addition, each road you take will be one of five different types, again with different challenges and punishments. Let's first cover road types, then locations, and how to use this information for an overall strategy. There are five road types, each with unique outcomes. The easiest and rarest route, the safe route, is just like it sounds. You'll drive from one location to the next and nothing positive or negative will happen to you. The next road type is the road combat. Somewhere along the path, you will have an unavoidable combat node that will be a random gaunt and or pillager encounter, rewarding you with a small amount of relics, baubles, and low chance of an item and mastery point. Passing through an oblivion's tear will automatically increase your loathing by one, making your journey progressively harder up until four loathing when you will be consumed by loathing and the mountain boss will gain a buff. The final two route types will affect your stagecoach gear. A rough patch is an unavoidable trap that will reduce your wheels by one, and a hazardous road will reduce your coach armor by one. When you run out of either wheels or armor and hit one of these traps, you will face a challenging urgent repair fight that acts purely as a punishment with no rewards. It's very important that you consider route types when planning out an ideal route, as reaching max loathing or facing an urgent repair fight is an easy way to kill a run, especially for an inexperienced player and or a weaker team comp. However, locations at the heart of Darkest Dungeon 2 and their benefits and challenges are primarily how you should decide on an optimal path. Let's go over them now. There are 11 types of locations. There are the battle encounters, which give you an option to fight a battle for corresponding rewards, while also giving you an encounter screen where you will pick an outcome of one of your heroes choosing, which will either gain or lose affinity for that specific hero, depending on if they agree, shown by either a gold or blue glow surrounding the heroes. Let's cover these battle encounters first. The most basic note is the resistance encounter, which will put you in a battle against the region-specific enemy pool. Winning the fight will offer you a larger amount of both relics and baubles than road fights. In fact, this is generally the best way to obtain baubles, and a higher chance of item rewards and a mastery point. The region-specific enemies are generally much more difficult than the road fight pool, and you'll need to understand each region's enemies to decide if your team is up for the challenge. At the encounter screen itself, you'll usually get a variety of options from fleeing, occasionally giving up relics and torch to do so, or fighting the encounter, sometimes with buffs attached. Especially early in runs, these should be your bread and butter to earn mastery points and accumulate currency. They should continue to be a priority node, however they're much easier to skip late game if you already have the mastery and loot necessary for the boss. These are the least dangerous of all the battle nodes for the most part, so even early game, don't worry too much about attempting these. If you can't clear your standard resistance encounter, you're not strong enough to do anything else, really. Next, we have Oblivion's Ingress, or the Cultist Encounters. These fights will draw from the Cultist enemy pool, excluding the big mini-bosses, leaving you with a mix of Evangelists, Cherubs, Heralds, and Altars. These are much more challenging than your standard resistance encounters, especially early on when you don't have access to a lot of dodge removal and skills. These locations almost never drop currency, instead giving you guaranteed light, almost guaranteed mastery, and an item chance, along with a chance to obtain the rare cultist trinkets, the only place in the game you can do so. When you have all trinkets unlocked, the average cultist trinket is relatively bad, though a handful can completely change the game. Early on, however, with few unlocks, you will have access to only Wounding Words and Misstep, which are two of the better trinkets in the early game. There is much more risk associated, but I will generally risk these encounters if I have my currency somewhat settled to get a chance at these potential rewards. And we cap this group off with the Creature Dens, the most challenging and rewarding of the group. Here you will face two waves from the dangerous creature enemy pool, which include high dodge enemies like the dogs and spiders, and the corpse-eating worms. An early Creature Den can often mean death, especially if you haven't packed any sort of DOT heal. However, the rewards are unique, offering you a deliverable item that is always worth at least one mastery along with powerful effects, from cheaper prices to disease clear. You also get a chance at additional mastery and even items, though again, you find no baubles here. 
with a weaker team comp this is a challenge you should skip but by mid run you should be seeking out this challenge as these rewards are some of the best in the game next location type is the non-battle encounter nodes this will give you the same encounter screen where you'll be able to select an outcome from your heroes to gain or lose affinity this time generally receiving a specific item type first up is the basic assisted encounter here you will choose to aid the normies or not there are a multitude of reward types here this is the primary mechanic for gaining light with the most common options being 30 light along with another reward but sometimes you'll get a flat 45 light instead this is also the primary location that offers food for inns alongside your light buffs you can also gain combat items in items and even repair your coach alternatively you can sometimes trade light or relics for even greater rewards all from this same selection of rewards there's an important location especially once better food than slime mold is unlocked but the rewards on average pale in comparison to fights this location should generally be hit up once or twice a region along a path where you will need the light boost this can also be a recovery node if you're in no condition for a fight but in general you should be challenging yourself as much as possible as drifting from assistance to assistance is a poor way of scaling and will generally punish your team long term academic studies are a high risk high reward location offering you exclusive trinkets and items in exchange for stress damage negative quirks and even diseases the trinkets and items vary wildly depending on the curio with some being useless and some being among the strongest in the game with the wide variety of curios it's pretty hard to guarantee the items you want by spamming studies and for a fully unlocked profile i suggest mostly avoiding these locations and pushing for items you know you can obtain consistently for newer profiles however these locations can turn a sure loss into a win with the right reward i still suggest taking mostly solid reliable nodes like fights but sprinkling a few of these in is a pretty good idea early on and then there's the oasis an absolutely op location the oasis only has a couple of options selecting a specific hero to interact and heal their stress by five but the far better option is to select a hero with the supplies option if available choosing this option will give you a stack of mineral spring water three items that will heal for 10 percent of your hp and three stress each this is a powerhouse item both early game before you have heals unlocked and late game in making stress management a cakewalk always a solid location to visit you better have a really good reason to avoid this if it's scouted for you now onto the other locations which include shops loot and various other functions the hoarder is your main shop you'll get a wide variety of items for sale here but the real star of the show is the trinket selection this is one of the few ways to get the rare region-based trinkets and there's almost always a very solid selection here if you have the baubles for at least one rare trinket 65 baubles at base then this should be the target especially if you know what trinkets you want from a region early in a profile this isn't the best location however without unlocks and you're better off finding another area i don't value the rest of the shop selection much but if you're hunting for a specific combat or in item for your build you can take a detour here the hospital has multiple functions first you can cure a disease for 12 relics and you can also heal hp on this screen but literally nobody has ever wasted money with this mechanic on the next tab you can remove a negative quirk for 16 relics and lock a quirk in for 32 worth it if you have a memoried hero the final tab is the shop and the selection here will depend on your unlocks generally you'll see simple powders poultices and various healing items along with laudanum if you have healing styles unlocked they will usually be here so this is a pretty good location to shop for that reason alone for the most part though i won't go here purely to shop unless i'm desperate for salves you really want to make the most of your hospital vids when you have nasty quirks to remove the watchtower will fully scout the remaining region for you i try to avoid these as a dead node is usually pretty bad but if you're farming for a specific node and you find a watchtower early usually you suck it up and visit a more useful watchtower visit is if you're worried about loathing and or your stagecoach and want to scout the route roads as well if you're playing cowardly in the final region when fully scaled this is also a free node so not the worst idea next is the hero shrines this is the only location where you can unlock new skills for your heroes you also receive a mastery point once fully unlocked all you received is the single mastery point if you still have skill unlocks to do for your heroes this is your top priority and a mandatory visit otherwise you generally never path here specifically for the reward a mastery is nice but you don't want to waste time just getting one and nothing else and then we have the academic caches called swine caches in the sluice these will offer you 12 relics and 12 bowels 
24 relics in the sluice with some guaranteed food and an additional array of items. This is one of the best value nodes in the game, being one of the biggest and certainly easiest source of currency and food with a nice item bonus. Especially early, I'll generally path here. The late and mid game, you really want nodes who offer a bit stiffer rewards along with the encounter screen. Then we have the guaranteed nodes, including Oblivion's Rampart, which will always be the last node of the region, not counting the sluice, offering a forced cultist fight. First biome will be a normal cultist fight with an altar. Second biome, you'll face a deacon or cardinal mash. And in the final region, you'll face the dangerous mini boss exemplar. And finally, the lair, another node that will take you directly into a fight. You will face two region based bosses and then finally have the option of taking on the region boss for massive rewards, including a trophy mandatory for unlocking the mountain and tackling the act boss. Each early battle will reward eight relics and baubles with the region boss offering a giant loot pool with a ton of relics and baubles, items, rare trinkets, including specific lair trinkets that are unlocked even on new profiles, along with mastery and light. Getting an early lair is the best way to scale your team. Of course, if your squad is viable against this specific boss, this isn't an awful location even if you skip the boss with guaranteed rewards for each level you complete, but it pales in comparison with auto battle nodes in this respect. Overall, locations are generally the most important decision you make after you select a team. Going into each region, you want a good idea of what goals you want accomplished. Do you want general loot? Are you hunting for skill unlocks? Do you have a specific set of trinkets in mind and need a hoarder? Does your team require a hospital, etc.? This also needs to be balanced with route management keeping your loathing down and stagecoach healthy while taking a survivable path. Always be sure to take a moment at the start of your region and map out a path beforehand. Just mindlessly drifting from node to node is not a successful way to defeat this challenging game. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and become a YouTube member or join my Patreon for early access to my upcoming videos.